Well, hello, everybody. Jeff Cowan here from Jeff Cowan's Pro Talk, the place that's trained more successful service advisors and service employees than any other place on the planet. Hey, I'm back with a new edition of my podcast entitled Right Service, Write Your Own Paycheck, the path to making over $100,000 a year when writing service in the automotive industry. And you know, at this very recording, just over 20% of you doing that job, writing service in the automotive industry, are making $100,000 a year or more. But that means that nearly 80% of you are not. So what are we going to do about that? Well, I recommend you keep listening to me. Watch this podcast. Go back and watch all my other podcasts. There's dozens of them out, out there. Go to my website, AutomotiveServiceTraining.com, AutomotiveServiceTraining.com, and there you will find all, all kinds of tools and processes and word tracks, articles, and more podcasts and videos, me showing you exactly what you should be doing to maximize the opportunity that you have. Because my thinking is this, hey, if you're going to be at a service center all day long, why wouldn't you want to maximize the opportunity and be the best you could be? That's the way I think. Well, hey, listen, I know it's been a few weeks since I've uh, done a podcast, but I've had some problems. I uh, caught bronchitis, got it pretty bad. That took me out for a couple of weeks, and then I, uh, I was out on the road, and I was out recording my new virtual training uh, system that I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, launch here in just a few weeks, and so I didn't really have a lot of time to do it, but I'm back today, and here's what we're going to do. And by the way, I'm going to be back over the next uh, several weeks with new podcasts, so make sure you continue to tune in for those. But today, I'm going to do something uh, 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 that I've done before, and that is I'm going to answer your questions. Because in my off time the last three or four weeks and not filming podcasts, boy, did my email box, my texting, my telephone ring off the hook with all kinds of questions from you. So I'm going to answer a couple of them here for you today, actually about three of them. Uh, so this comes in from a young lady by the name of Julie. Uh, boy, it's a pretty name. I, I, you, uh, you know, it's, it's not a name that you hear much anymore, but I sure like that name. And she wrote in and she said, uh, and, and, and by the way, I, I'm attributing this question to her, but there was, there was quite a few people that wrote in and, and uh, asked this question. Here's what it was. Uh, Jeff, do you see anything unique happening as we exit the pandemic? Do you see anything unique happening as we exit the pa pandemic? And um, yeah, there's there's a, there's a few things. Uh, as I've talked about in, in past podcasts, you know, since since the COVID nineteen thing started, the virus thing, we saw a, a, an immediate and a dramatic uh, change in your customers. They instantly overnight became one of the easiest customers to handle. My theory on that was is because during that time we all had in the back of our mind that we were one a teleconference, if you will, or telenews conference, whatever, away from them them the government shutting everything down like airplanes, trains, buses. Uh, uh, Uber, Lyft, all public transportation. And so it hit people that that could happen. And so they started focusing more on their personal vehicles because it hit them. This could be my only way to get around. You, my personal car here in the very near, near future could be the only way I can get back and forth to work, to the grocery store, get the kids off to school, uh, go to the doctor, keep myself happy and and the like. So what happened is, uh, is, is the customer came in more willing to invest in their vehicle than at any other time. Now, along with that, not only have we found they're more willing to invest in their vehicle than any other time that I've seen in my 34 years, uh, but they're actually easier to handle. It's never been easier to get the survey scores, perfect survey scores, high retention, high effective labor rate, high hours per repair order, high sales, and, and, and you should be dealing with almost no heat cases and disgruntled customers. This is a very unique customer. And it didn't really surprise me when it happened uh, because, you know, as I've said dozens and dozens of times, uh, I'm a student of history. And one of the things I've learned about the car industry is in retail in general, basically, is that anytime there's a major event that happens in the United States, you know, for example, like unfortunately the Twin Towers coming down, uh, the Great Recession of 2008, and now COVID-19, uh, whenever something like that major happens in the United States of America, it generally affects and changes dramatically how people look at buying stuff, what they'll buy, and what they expect and the like. And the same thing just happens. So there's this new customer uh, out there. And so, uh, it's, they're, they're so easy to work with that you literally should be having your absolute best service year ever. Whether you're an individual service advisor or you're an individual business or you have multiple businesses, uh, whatever, you should be having your absolute best year ever. And I don't think coming out of the pandemic uh, that that customer mindset is going to change uh, f until the next major event. Uh, which I predict is probably going to be somewhere in the next eight to ten years because that's what kind of happens in, in, uh, in, in history. About every eight to ten years or something big like that happens. Uh, but So I think for the next eight to ten years it's going to be very easy if you're in service to handle these customers if, if you learn 
how to handle them. Now the problem I'm seeing is this, uh, with this new customer, is that one, most people out there doing your jobs didn't realize that there's a shift that's happening. Number two, that being the case, they're handling these customers the way they were pre-COVID, and so there's no way you're maximizing the opportunity. So you've got to figure out who this new customer is, and you've got to figure out uh, processes and word tracks and stuff on how to handle this customer. Now, as luck would have it, I have that stuff, so we can help you out with that if, 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 if you like. Um, the other thing that I see going on exiting the pandemic, you know, is, uh, is you know, they talk about the mask mandate, and I don't want to get political here, so I'm going to try and walk right down the, the straight line because my beliefs have absolutely nothing to do with you and your world, just like your beliefs have nothing or little to do with me and my world. But here's what I believe based on history and what I'm seeing as I travel the United States and, and the like. Again, I'm a student of history, so if you really follow this stuff, it's fairly easy to predict. Um, uh, max mask mandates uh, could you know they're, they're happening whether it gets stick or not who knows but uh, there you know I've been getting a lot of questions do you think there's gonna be another sh uh, shutdown and my my answer is no uh, I don't think so because you know they've mentioned it a few times and man people are pushing back and I think I think and I'm hoping that everybody's smart enough not to go down that path because I think it put us into depression but I don't think it's gonna happen I I, I really don't I I can't see anything out there that's indicating there's going to be another shutdown, so I wouldn't let that affect me. Now, that said, let me go a little bit further here and tell you this. For us in the service business, you know, and I'm talking strictly business because I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't want to see the country hurt. I don't want to see any of that stuff, but it's talking strictly business from our mindset here. Uh, if there's not a shutdown, that's great for us, okay, because customers are going to continue to come in and allow us to have the best service year we've ever had. If there is a shutdown, it still doesn't affect us. I mean, because last year, within three days of the shutdown being announced, what happened? The service business, the automotive industry, was considered an essential business. They didn't shut you down. And many of you out there that, are, that understand this new customer are having your best years ever. So if there is another shutdown, it should not affect us on any, to any great lengths, okay? So I wouldn't worry about that. So there's just a couple things I see happening as we come out of the pandemic. But all signs, no matter what happens, point to good for us. I think for the next five to ten years, not only because I think people are going to keep spending money, but it's the easiest customer. My 34 years of doing business in the automotive industry, easiest customer I've ever seen. You should be having your, your best year. All right, got another question here. We'll move on, but before I do, I want to tell you about something because uh, a lot of you have been writing in and asking this. Jeff, what about your workshops? We know they got postponed several times because of the pandemic. What's happening? Well, I'm pleased to announce I've been talking to airlines, I've been talking to the hotels where we have ours booked, and they are going to happen. As a matter of fact, most of them are, are really close to selling out. So uh, this fall, we're going to be in Nashville, we're going to be in Indianapolis, Indiana, and we're going to be in Chicago, Illinois. Those are going to be our one-day workshop. Those are almost sold out, so if you think you want to go to one of those towns, Nashville, Tennessee, Indianapolis, Indiana, Chicago. Uh, you get yourself signed up. Do it now. Do it quick uh, because, again, it's almost sold out. I have another special event in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, this is going to be held at the Lightspeed uh, VT, Lightspeed VT Training Center they've developed in Brad's big stage room. They built this room that's, that's specifically for special events. Very limited seating. Only 60 people are going to be allowed in that meeting. Uh, and it's really cool, this meeting spot. They're all lazy boy chairs. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, but it's a two-day workshop and this is and it, and it happens in September before the other ones happens in September 23rd and 24th 23rd and 24th two-day workshop and this is where I'm going to introduce uh, uh, it for, for the first time in a public workshop my new content for this new customer I mean if you really don't understand who this customer is you want to know who they are come to that event because uh, I'm going to show you all kinds of stuff in there uh, on how to handle this customer the best way so you can maximize your opportunity now of course I'm going to talk about my classic stuff like the walk around we're going to talk about the diagnostic questions questions and how you can ask those questions and only get information about why the customer is here, but you can also figure out who they were who are, or who they are so you can talk to them on a level they understand. I will show you how to build rapport in such a way. I know you've never seen it this way before. It will blow your mind. Uh, you're really going to love that. Uh, we're going to talk about how to deliver a vehicle, uh, how to set the customer up with realistic expectations. Now, I've been getting a lot of text on that workshop, and by the way, it's halfway sold out, so if you think you want to go to that, you need to sign up now. I mean, that because that is, I'm not even referring to it as a workshop. It, I'm cons uh, referring to it as an event.
We get a lot of texts and people saying, well, what, do you, what about accessory sales? You're going to talk about that, tire sales and the like, and I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to show you how to sell more tires than you've ever sold. I'm going to show you how to sell more accessories than you've ever sold. And, and for example, if you're on the good, better, best, you know, we have a good, better, best system, I will show you how to sell more best uh, products uh, than you ever thought imaginable. Some very, very e easy to follow and learn techniques. I mean, this is a great workshop. And if you can't get there, by the way, you know, this is only for the one on the 23rd and 24th. If you can't go to Las Vegas, guess what we're going to do. We're going to do two things. We're going to broadcast it live and so for a fee you can turn it on in your in your place of business and watch this thing over the two days that happens and then we're also going to record it as we're as we're doing this thing live and then you'll be able to for a fee watch it for the next 90 days if you want to i mean this is going to be a really really cool event i'm putting a lot into it i've been over there working on it getting used to the stages and the lighting stuff you got to do it Oct september 23rd and 24th las vegas nevada it's where i introduce the new content two-day workshop and then in nashville indianapolis and chicago we're doing a one-day workshop get signed up they're almost sold out, and the Vegas one is halfway sold out. Very limited seating on that one. Okay, enough of the advertisement. Let's go back to the next question. Jeff, uh, I work at a car dealership, and by the way, this is sent in by a gentleman by the name of Danny, uh, and, and uh, Danny lives in the great state of Arkansas. Don't get many uh, uh, th things coming out of Arkansas here recently, but here we go. Uh, Arkansas, Danny says, how is the chip situation uh, affecting business? How is the chip situation affecting business? Well, uh, great. You know, I mean, I hate it that, they, that, that, that the dealerships can't get the new cars to sell because they don't have the chips for the, you know, it runs the engines and stuff. But I tell you, from the service side, it's great because it makes us more valuable. Because if people go in and they can't buy new cars, you know, then what are they going to do? They're going to put money into the car that they have. And we're seeing that happening in huge numbers. I mean, you couple that with the way this customer is. I mean, it's just unbelievable the opportunity that's out there. So it's, it makes it, so it adds more value to us. Now, there is a big surgence in people buying used cars because, you know, dealerships are going out of their way to get those used cars in. But even that's good because used cars come with what? Miles on them. So, you know, you deliver a car and typically within 90 days, they've got to come back and not just get an oil change and stuff, but sometimes stuff bigger than that so I I think it makes us more valuable another thing that it does the chip situation if you're especially if, if you're a car dealership it gets the dealership uh, the dealer principal and gets the general manager to focus more on service and how often does that happen and and it's really interesting because here in the last few weeks one of the things I was doing th that prevented me from filming is I got invited to a whole series of dealer 20 meetings and dealers were talking about this all of a sudden they, they understand that hey these cars are hard to get a hold of and even when the chips roll back in over the next two or three months and these cars start to roll back in, uh, used cars and fixed operations is the thing. Fixed operations is the key. So they're looking at it, they're investing in it, they're going to start giving you all the different tools that you need. So I think the chip situation, you know, may be bad from the new car standpoint, but I think from the service side, it just, I'm repeating myself, it makes us look more valuable, gets more focus on us, and uh, it makes it easier for us to do our job. So I think it's, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, and, and by the way, I was asked in several emails, how long do I think that situation is going to last? I don't have a crystal ball, but I do follow uh, what's going on in the industry fairly closely. And, you know, at this very recording uh, of, this, of, of this, the first week of August, uh, I think we're probably going to start seeing cars come back in mass, meaning bunch and bunch of them, probably toward the end of October, November. And I think we're going to finish this, this year out strong. And in 2022, it should just be a real barn burner. All right, so uh, let's go to another question here. But before I do, I also i am going to go do another commercial here. Uh, one of the things that I've done is I've been getting asked is, Jeff, uh, the different meetings you're in and the, and the stuff we've seen, you keep talking about this customer is different with COVID. Uh, you know, and you said a few minutes ago we could go to workshop. Is there another way to get this stuff? Uh, yeah, you can, you can do the live streaming from the two-day workshop, or you can do this. I've been filming my VT. I've been refilming it. I've been going back to some of the material that still is valid and updating it, and then I've, I've recorded the new stuff, the new content. And I'm extremely excited about this. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I filmed it where I'm doing the two-day workshop in Vegas. I, I, I filmed it in Bradley's uh, training room. The, it's called Bradley's Big Stage. And so what I did is instead of standing in front of a teleprompter, which most of you tell me uh, you, you don't think shows my true passion and enthusiasm, uh, instead of doing it that way, and instead of doing it in front of a live audience, because doing it in front of a live audience is, is tricky because you, you know, the, the audience is, is a different dynamic, what I've done is I'm doing a live studio recording. So I'm up on this stage, I've got this huge television behind me, and it's not rear projection uh, uh, stuff like that. I mean, it's a huge 
television with, with light bulbs and it's unbelievable. It's a huge stage with this huge background so you can clearly see all the PowerPoints that I'm going through them and you can see me, I'm up there walking around. I, I, I tell you, it, it's the best Jeff Cowan, if I can, uh, that I've ever seen. This is really, really something. This is going to set the world on fire. As a matter of fact, two manufacturers caught wind of what I was doing. They asked me to send them samples because we're going to start posting this stuff here real soon, you know, get it up on our site. And I got two manufacturers looking at buying this, you know. I mean, it's that good. It's really, really something different. I will guarantee you in this niche of the business, nobody in service has ever seen videos and training uh, filmed and produced and delivered this way. And you take that and you add the content that I've got in on it, I mean, there's just, there's no way. No, nobody can beat this. It's the best in the marketplace. And I, I have no, I don't feel bad about telling you that. I mean, even if it sounds self-centered, this is the best. And so here, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to launch uh, this start launching at the 15th on the new site. So anytime between now and August 15th, you really need, it's a subscription based thing, call and sign up because I'll give it to you for half off. Up to the 15th, I'll give it to you for half off. Beyond that, I'm charging full price because I'm putting a, hundred, a few hundred thousand, yes I said a few hundred thousand dollars in, the, in producing this and it is killer. I mean if you want to be the best you can be, workshops is not your gig, having us come and visit your showroom is not the gig, this online virtual training is killer. It's all set up in these little videos, five or 10 minutes is all you need to watch every every week. We have a virtual training manager here. She can see your test scores because there's testing in it. I can see your test scores and we, we give you homework assignments and 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 there's a special surprise coming we're going to have an actual virtual role play on this thing online. Nothing nothing in the industry even comes close to what I'm getting ready to roll out here the 15th of August. And then over the next three months once I launch the initial uh, segments, I'm going to keep adding training to it. It's killer, 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 killer. Let's talk about the final question we have here today. Uh, now this came in from a lot of Chrysler dealerships because over the last 45 days something major happened to Chrysler. And what it was is, is this. This question came in, we're going to credit we're going to credit this one with a young lady by the name of Maddie. She's out of New York and here's what she asked. You know, I work at a Chrysler dealership and by the way, hundreds of people wrote in. I'm just crediting Maddie because it was one of the first ones I saw. Um, um, uh, I work at a Chrysler dealership and suddenly there seems to be a renewed focus on survey scores. Um, wh and what, what, what does it mean and how can we prep? Well, um, you know, as most of you know, uh, back that have been in this business at all, you know, in the 80s and 90s, it was all about the survey score. Early 2000s, all about the survey scores. And then what happened was, is most manufacturers started realizing that they put so much pressure on the dealerships and the people who worked in them to get high survey scores that the numbers became fake because dealers started buying them, they started paying for them, they started all these different tricks. It was all legal, but they did all these different tricks and it drove the numbers up. But the one thing it didn't do is it didn't allow the manufacturers to figure out what they wanted to figure out from the survey and that is how, uh, how do you like our cars and how do you like our people so we can find our shortcomings and fix them. So, it, so most manufacturers just said, you know, if we're not going to get what we want and what we need, then who cares not paying attention to it. And even Chrysler stepped away from it for a while. But now these manufacturers, and Chrysler was the first one to do it in such a bold way, is coming back and say, you know, we really do care about our customers. We really do want to know what they're thinking. And so they're back hitting it hard. So, so what does it mean? It means they're going to be watching it. And it means that if you're a service advisor or a service manager, it, it, you're really going to have to stay on top of this and get high numbers because de there's a lot at risk here for dealers. You know what all that is. If you're a dealer principal, business owner, general manager, you're going to pay very close attention to this because they are going to come down on this hard if you don't have the high numbers. And when I say hard, I won't even get into that. I mean, they'll, they'll make your life miserable. So. Uh, the, so you, you, what does it mean? It means they're all about it. And this is going to be around. Chrysler's going to be focused, laser focused on this based on the context I have at the factory. They're going to be laser focused on this for the next five to ten years. Survey score, survey, survey score. So how can you prep? Well, there's two ways uh, initially. Uh, one is you can buy the survey scores. Now I know, you know, I got to be careful here because Chrysler's going to get pissed when I tell you this, but you're going to do it anyway. What I mean by them, you know, I, I've seen this happen dozens of times. Mr. Customer, there's a survey come to you when you get it. If you, if you don't want to fill it out, come in here. We'll help you fill it out. Come on. Or if you bring it in, let us help you fill it out. We'll give you a free tank of gas. Or, you know, Mr. Customer, all, all this kind of stuff. And so there's, there, there's, there's just all kinds of stuff. You know, one of the things I would stay away from when it comes to getting the higher survey scores is I would stay away from software 
software programs that, that uh, promise higher survey scores, software programs aren't going to get you higher survey scores. I mean, this is a people thing, okay? Another way you can get these survey scores is earn them. And the way you earn them is obviously you give great service, uh, you, you, you go over the top, uh, you set, you take control of the customer, you set the expectations, don't let them have control of it, and, and they set expectations, you do it, and, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you've watched any of our past uh, podcasts, I've talked about it a lot, I'll be talking about it in these upcoming workshops and on this online training, but if, if you're doing all those different things, the survey score is not going to be a problem if you prep for it, so you're going to have to get yourself trained for it. Now, I will do this, I'll give you a tip. Because I'm really a master at getting high survey scores. When I first started out, uh, you know, 34 years ago, the better part of my first 15 years, I, I really focused on s survey scores a lot because it was the big thing. And I worked with three different manufacturers on it, and I drove the numbers through the roof. And one of the easiest things, I, I don't have time today to go into the psychology why this works, but one of the things that will drive your scores through the roof is the customer sometimes when they get these surveys, they forget what you did and you didn't do. So you have to tell them what you did. You have to tell them what you're going to get graded on. And so the best way to do that is take the questions on the survey and turn them into statements and use these statements when you're communicating with your customers. What do I mean? I'll give you an example. An example would be, for example, there's usually a question on there, uh, was it fixed right the first time? So how would I turn that into a statement? How would I let the customer know I did that? Mr. Customer, this is Jeff, your expertly trained service advisor. I'm calling because I got great news. Uh, I got great news, that, and the great news is we've got your repair completed, and I want to let you know that we got it repaired uh, on the first. We got it repaired on the first time. Okay. Another question is always on. So see, I, I took that question: Was it repaired on the first time? And, and told them, I just want to let you know we repaired it right, correctly the first time. Another question on there is: Did we call when promised? Mr. Customer, this is Jeff. Uh, I'm your factory trained service advisor, and I just want to let you know I'm calling as promised. Okay, and to let you know that. Okay, so again, I take the statements, and I take the questions, I turn them into statements, and tell the customers that I did them, and I, and I, and I tell them that I did it as many times as I can without it being overkill, and then what happens is there's a lot of emotions, a lot of psychology going on here. When they get the survey and they see that question, it triggers that conversation, and then you're more likely to get a score. That is, I hope that makes sense, because, uh, and I explained it right, because that will drive your scores up faster than anything. If you tell the customers based on the questions they're going to have, take those questions again, repeat myself, turn them into statements, and tell them you did it, that will drive the numbers up quick. Now, that by itself won't do it. You have to, you're going to have to train yourself to be in control of these customers. You're going to have to train yourself on how to set up realistic expectations and the like. And again, I don't care if it sounds like a commercial or not, if you're struggling with any of that, uh, call us. I mean, I can send people to your, your, your service department and show you how to get uh, survey scores like that. This isn't something, by the way, that takes months and months to figure out. I'm telling you right now, immediately, we'll get these, uh, these survey scores up within days, put you on the path to that. I can send people out there. You can watch our training on the virtual training. I address it there. You can also uh, come to our workshop. I talk about it a whole lot there. Uh, or you can, you can give me a call. Here's my cell phone number, 317-506-1003, 317-506-1003. And tell me what you got going, and, and if it's something short, I'll do it for nothing. But I, I can create a whole program and, and show you exactly how to do what I'm, I'm, I'm uh, instructing you to do here. But uh, would I be nervous about the Chrysler and other manufacturers jumping all over survey scores again? No. Uh, would I would I want to pay attention to it? Absolutely, uh, because I would know that I'm going to have, if not perfect or near perfect, survey scores because I know how to handle this customer. I know what it takes to get them to to give you uh, perfect scores on these. It's it's really it's one of the easiest things to do. My big fear is when Chrysler jumps back into this is they're going to spend uh, millions and millions of dollars on it and the same thing with other vendors and dealers. Millions and millions of dollars are going to be spent on solutions with this and the really the best and easiest solution is is simply you. You're, you're the silver bullet in this. It's, it, it, I said it earlier, uh, technology is not going to get you survey scores. It's your ability to handle these customers. This is a, a person to person, human to human type of thing. So there we go today. Uh, there's three questions. I hope that uh, I answered them the way you wanted to. I'm, I'm, I'll come back next week. I haven't decided if I'm going to answer more questions because I got a bunch of them or if I'm going to pick up a topic and do that. I, I guess we'll have to wait until next week to find out. But I do want you to come back next week. And, and I do want you to uh, uh, continue to watch what I do because I'll help you become the best you can be. I'll teach you how to win in service. I'll show you how to maximize the opportunity and be the absolute best you can be. Because as a, on a service advisor level, if you're not making $100,000 a year, you're doing something wrong. As a service manager, a fixed operations director, a business owner, if you're not having your best service year ever, you're doing something wrong. And let's quit messing around with this. Let's make these things happen. The solutions are out there. The solutions are simple and they're very, very affordable. So with that, hey, I just want to say, 
my name is Jeff Cowan, and I have a company called Jeff Cowan's Pro Talk. We've trained more service advisors and service personnel to be successful than anybody else on the planet. I mean, we just have, and we'll train you. I want you to be my next success story, so give us a call. And, and whether you do or not, I want to say goodbye for now. I'll talk to you next week. In the meantime, make it a great week, because that's what I'm going to do. And God bless you all. And God bless you all.